All right, so the recording has started. Can you hear me well? Any reactions? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Johannes. Okay, all right. Okay, let's get started. Uh, welcome to week 12. We are finally on week 12, really the final week of the training phase. I hope, um, you know, I hope the emotions are still very, very positive. Apologies for the um, for the noise background, but yeah, let's get started with the stand up. How was how was last week, and um, uh, you know, how are you getting ready to start the job search phase? Uh, how, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, okay, we're going to be talking about that. And also, if there are any presentations, Rahmet is going to be helping us lead that. I can pass it to you, Rahmet. For yeah, now. I, okay, thank yeah. you so much. So, we should go on to the presentation part. So, uh, group yeah, one. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, group one, we can start from group one. Any members from Group One? Uh, the the work was individual, so it's um. Okay, sorry. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Uh, so we'll have to take uh, um. Yeah, I apologize. Uh, yes, it's it's okay. It, we have to take volunteers basically. Um, please raise your hand. Uh, so we have a couple of people raising their hand and we need to see more, uh, but we can start with uh, Johannes. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, then go ahead. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, as always, I'm going to present my last week project on contract advisor tax system. So, Lizzie is an early stage Israel company developing the next generation contract AI. And for this project, our task is building, evaluating, and improving a RAC system for contract QA. And for this project, I used Pinecone as my database and for the chunking i experimented with two methods custom chunking in which you will chunk it based on the language of the text, uh, the sentence and recursive character text splitter and open ai embedding i used it as my for embedding and lang smith so i implemented different methods for this project to try to see and evaluate the responses. And I started with basic RAG implementation in which the system uses various components from Langchain, <coughs> including renewable pass-through and string output parser for passing the output. And when I started working on this project, I used a prompt from Langchain Hub. And the results was promising, it was getting a good responses and if you look at the lang smith the response time was around 5.1 seconds but it was different for each question but it was around five seconds four second for each question then after that i changed the prompt with a custom prompt i uh, write, i wrote i wrote a custom prompt and tried to see the differences with the long chain prompt and there wasn't much differences between the results and then i implemented two query expansion hypothetical and multiple query expansion and uh, for the hypothetical one i was not getting <coughs> a good result so mainly i focused on multiple <coughs> sorry multiple query expansion and the first observation was the process took a significant amount of time and before we dive into the results. Uh, let's talk about the, the way I implemented this. So for the hypothetical answer expansion, the system generates 
a, an answer for the original query. I use an open AI for that. And the hypothetical answer is then used with the original query used to retrieve the relevant document. And that relevant document with the original uh, query will generate the final responses. And for the mid multiple queries function, the system generates up to five uh, additional related question based on the original documents and uh, the original query, sorry. And for each six query, meaning the original query in this generated five related question, we receive rela relevant documents. And using core re-ranking process, I selected top three most relevant documents. And with this three relevant documents in the original query, I generate a final responses and the result I was getting was for some of the question or for some of the query, it was getting a good response, for, but for the others, uh, it, it was getting a bad responses. And I was trying to look at the reason and the relevant documents almost always have the answer for that question. And I tried to change this five to three and this three to one, but I still was getting the same results. And the conclusion I made was the primary, the primary reason for those poor responses was the prompt quality. Even though I tried to manipulate with the prompt, I, I was still getting the same uh, results. So maybe by writing a will structure and will written prompts, we can get a better result with the multiple query expansion. Then, what I did was I changed the chat open AI with the trivial retrieval Q and A. And uh, with this model, I uh, used different methods just to see the results. And I used Dragas to measure those implementation. And for the first one, I only change the from this one, I only change the model to retrieval Q and A. And this was the Dragas evaluation. Then I changed the chunking method from my custom chunking method to recursive character splitter. And as you can see, there is a little decrease in context recall and increase in peacefulness. Then I tested as uh, this two was using a retrieval Q and A uh, dot uh, from LLM method. I changed that to from chain type with the staff uh, chain type. And this was the result. And there wasn't much difference between these three implementation, just a give and take between context recall and faithfulness. Then last but not least, I implemented autogen to see the results. And the system consists of two agents, retrieval augmented user proxy agent and retrieval augmented assistant agent. This was the model and this retrieval user proxy agent will take the model, I mean the document, the chunking method and everything that I got to his uh, documents. And I tried testing uh, different methods like changing the prompt and uh, changing the token size, uh, the, where is it? Changing the chunk mode from one line to multiple line. I changed this to false to, I used custom embedding model and different recursive model, but Still, I was getting the same uh, same results, especially for this question. It's saying that the document doesn't have enough context to answer this question. So, from from what I noticed, the main reason for this bad response is that we're reading the docs file. It wasn't reading it very well, right? and for each space, you will put a new line and. I think that's what causing the bad responses. So, and of course there was a front end where the user can interact with our model. So if, uh, for the limitation, the first one is there needs to be a consistent metrics and measurement across all implemented methods. As you can see, for some of them, I evaluated using manually. For some of them, I try to look at the regas and uh, since I didn't have a consistent metrics and measurement, uh, my report or, uh, or the presentation wasn't good enough. Or, so there should be a consistent metrics. 
And uh, even though I implemented different methods, there is still several potential enhancements that can be done, maybe using different model or even with the one I use like retrieval q and a, we can still change some of the parameter and check if we can get a, a improvement. So for future experiment, first experiment with different chunking method can enhance our model maybe and implement alternative q and structure or with the one I use, maybe use different uh, parameters. So in conclusion, in developing era system for contract analysis, I uh, explore various AI technology strategies to enhance uh, advisory service. And in future, there is still opportunity to optimize and improve the real system. Okay, thank you, Johannes. I think this was a great presentation. Um, so I will start. Uh, I have a question for you. When you said uh, that the, the metrics that you are using for evaluation are not consistent, what what do you mean? Aren't you using ragas to evaluate everything, or? So yes, I was using ragas, but I didn't uh, like record it very well. Like uh, for retrieval, I recorded like this, but for the previous one. I was mainly focused on, I used Dragas, but I mainly focused on uh, evaluating manually. Ah, I see. Okay. Um, so like the plan is to use, maybe to use Dragas like consistently over for everything, or there are some issues, or is there some issue to, to using Dragas like to evaluate? No, Dragas is good. Uh, and looking at the time from our longest means, uh, the response time, maybe focus on those might be good okay uh okay thank you so um other questions for your hands okay uh I can show you maybe after uh, the next person, I, I can show you. Uh, okay, thank you. So uh, yeah, if you have, if we have time, we can get back to Johannes again. Thank you, Johannes, for presenting. So we can move on to the next person. I think we had Abu Bakr. Um, okay, before. Uh, right, so right now we can see that, um, so Abu Bakr, are you ready or, or like maybe I missed it? So my mistake. Okay. Uh, yes. You are ready? Okay, you can go. Yes, and then we can go with Gabbis, Mr. and Mahbuba next. Uh yeah, so go ahead and please like uh, if you can keep it uh, like we don't I don't want it to be too short, but like uh, keep it uh, concise as much as you can. Okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, I didn't actually finish the presentation, so I'll go ahead with my blog post. So I'll share you that one, and I will go over it as fast as possible. So, can you see? Yeah, we're seeing it. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So yeah, we were trying to build uh, an efficient uh, retrieval augmented generation. So the thing is, uh, having or running a rug is has actually become so simple. Like uh, the building rugs, it could take a, a, around hundred lines, of course. So the problem is having good and efficient pipeline to. Uh, that we can actually uh, use metrics on and actually is uh, free from hallucinations and um, that doesn't actually that is actually uh, scalable and efficient so yeah uh, so the retrievals uh, are uh, has been there for the past decade so yeah the, the there are keywords and vector types so as we will see uh, in the coming 
uh, discussion. So uh, our our primary goal is to rebuild, uh, to build a robust uh, rag system. Uh, actually, we are uh, focusing on the legal documents that we have. The, as as we can see, uh, we have two. So they are Robinsons in uh, after contracts, as they are called in their names. So. Uh, a simple consideration are on latency uh, cost. So uh, the first, for example, in uh, before I implemented the ChatGPT four uh, in my uh, testers, it it took around one dollar one dollar and eight four cents. And after I implemented it, it shoots up to ten dollars. So uh, apologies if I took too much, but. Uh, that shows uh, we need to be careful on our tokens and the amount of uh, retrievals or model calls we are using. So and we, are, we also have to make sure our answers are relevant. So yeah, then based on the document. So we have two types we are going to be testing. So the retriever component and the generation component. So yes, so this is the setup project. We, you can check out the GitHub repo. So one of the things we did was we created a configuration file so that we can completely uh, change what we are testing on. So as we as you can see, we implemented different types of query translations like Heidi hypothetical document retrieval, multi query. Uh, multi query is just having different queries for one uh, user question. So Rag Fusion. Uh, the composition was not implemented but in Heidi. So as you can see, it, this was not, this was previous uh, configuration, but we also implemented a uh, Raptor configuration, which is, we'll talk about it uh, in the coming. So the retriever, we have dense and hybrid. So for the text splitters, we also have semantic, sentence, character, and recursive. So these are all implemented. So we can just swap them out uh, in different. So for the chunk size, you can have any chunk size. So these are the last chunk size I used. So building the backend system, we have like different uh, classes. For example, like a factory and services. So factory would actually use the configurations from the fast API. So we have a database for the front-end integration. Yeah, so, so one of the things we saw was the Raptor contract have significantly higher token and the Robinsons are, have lower token. So this means we can fit the Robinson advisory token in one context window, but, uh, but not the Raptor contract. So, yeah, the context window for performative optimization and resource allocation. So, yeah, as I said earlier, the context window problem. So, yes, on the Raga score, we actually let's go to with the, with the uh, implementation or the testing. So, we evaluate different configurations. So, we evaluated Rag Fusion with chunk size 350, uh, recursive chunk, uh, chunking with chunk size 350 semantic chunking, character chunking, in just chunk size 230 while everything kept constant. Yeah, this all were uh, the tests. So one of the first tests we made was with 200 chunk size, which resulted in overall efficiency of 61%. So as you can see, the faithfulness score has is like 55%. The answer relevancy is 34 and the context recall is very low. So like 38 percent so uh, as, sorry to interrupt what, uh, can you define for me what is the overall efficiency is it so what i did was to actually have on uh, having each matrix seeing each matrix uh, is a little bit difficult so i i tried having one so i average each one of them to to have a single like a visualization not just a metric but i so added, you are Sorry, averaging. Um, yes. What are you averaging? Uh, like, can, can you tell me what are the matrices that the metrics that you are averaging? Like These which... are the four, the four metrics from the last. So, for, for example, the first one is yeah, answer relevancy, context recall, and precision. So, yeah. the second, the context scores is 
just seeing how much is the context efficiency. So I take the two of them, context recall and precision, I average them. So I can see the only the context recall part. So it's like, it's just to see it in a, in a single comparison for, because I'm, I was running different testers. I just wanted one, one single uh, item to see it through. So yeah, evaluations on hypothetical test. Uh, actually, it didn't perform well. So the overall efficiency dropped to 56, and uh, the faithfulness actually increased. But the context was the one, was the thing that that dropped. So it dropped the whole uh, score. But as you can see, individual ones, it became it dropped to 35 percent. The context record. So yeah uh rag fusions also was implemented it it uh, this metric was outstanding so it showed up to 81 percent the overall efficiency also the context recall from 38 percent to 58 percent so we also we also had uh different chunking mechanisms so surrendered with 50. so uh, i i think yeah this is the uh, best until now until the last time i uh, tried it not the last time until i wrote this project so uh, the other thing was we implemented uh, an indexing so I would, there was one interesting book that was called raptor so i tried implementing it initially but i had a trouble so i used the uh, raptor github repo for this so this actually performed really well on one of the documents so as you can see most of the the precisions are really good so raptor was uh, awesome so what raptor does is like a tree like a shotgun so uh, it's just chunks and summarizes and if it is too long again it chunks and summarizes so until it gets a single document or minimum documents yeah so we also implemented hybrid search using weaviet um yeah it's also a good Thing like animal on hybrid databases actually improve the overall efficiency on the high on the bigger token sized document. So it's became 82. Yeah. So having hybrid with drug fusion and semantic might actually help. So I will upload the data, the evaluations. So we built it's not actually finished, but the front end was built to visualize the different mechanisms we did on the back end. Yeah. So this was the, so in conclusion, like back systems were made, uh, evaluations were made, experimenting with optimizations, for optimizations for different drug mechanisms, but still have a lot to optimize on. So the limitation is the scalability, of course. So it is very huge latency in drug fusion, hybrid search, like it, it took the latency much higher, which may not be ideal for production environment. So uh, yeah, I'm handling ambiguity. Sometimes even if it's the context is there, it's the model says, I don't know. So we need a continuous improvement. So some of the questions I saw also are, it doesn't make sense even for me, but maybe I'm not a legal person. So having a legal person in our team might help. So yeah, this was all. Sorry if I took too much. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you for presenting. So um, um, any questions for our work? Let's see. Um, a couple of questions. All right. So uh, going back to okay, so let me just ask this. Uh, can you go back to the metrics that you you measured, and um, can you show me again? And you want to like, or you can mention to me the the metrics that you were comparing that um, I saw. Um, what I want to to see is that did you have like uh, um, I know that you like uh, okay so did you have like did you measure for example the metric of like um, accuracy or like its uh, answer correctness maybe in your in your evaluation 
use Dragas for all the metrics. Yeah, I know, I know you I knew that you use Dragas, but which metrics that we were you comparing? Like when you were comparing the different methods, like which which metrics you used? I, I know you showed that already, oh, but can you yeah, show again? Yeah. yeah. So on the context recall, mostly on the context recall because uh, I had a really low uh, context recall on on each of them, so I was uh, actually. Uh, for the context recall, it would actually be the query part and the retrieval. So mostly I'm testing, I was tweaking on that. Okay. So you're comparing this in particular. And which which method that was like, uh, like what is the highest thing that you got? Is the highest value? Uh, since I was actually uh, testing on the different documents, so one of the highest I got was around 95%. So 95% is for the smallest token uh, document. So it makes sense, actually, because it is a smaller one and retrieval might be easier. Uh, so like but, you have only one, one, one piece in the document. So the document has only like, the whole document is just one, one chunk, maybe three, and every retriever, um retrieving a uh, method will give you like it's going to get you the yes, that one implementing for example implementing uh, the raptor indexing on uh, the smallest document gives like 95 percent so yeah but okay thing... but you can see that this is like uh this is not going to be a representative of how this is actually going to perform right so um have you tried the two tests on the I'm on not sure, I mean, I'm, Tina, did yeah. you un I mean, I'm not sure you understood i mean is it are you clear that what he is saying and what you're saying are the same in a way he's saying on a smaller document which means a document of like there are two documents and one is small and one is big yeah like and so he was more referring about documents the document and so it, it doesn't matter like whether it's small or large right I mean, in a way, yes. and, and, I mean, so in a way, it doesn't matter what kind of document. It's just the question is. So I'm just more worried that you're, you're talking. Two of you are talking different things. One is so the, the okay. First let me let is, me okay. Yeah. I, I understand. So why does he he mentioned that it is that size mattered? So maybe can you explain why it works better? on a smaller document so i jumped into my own explanation but okay can you explain it yourself like you said it's small document that so it makes sense that it was performing better so can you explain why uh, because i think i think uh, so I'm, I'm not actually 100 percent sure so uh, maybe uh, having the, the chunks i made was was smaller so it's like 300 to 200 so having those would uh, get more context into the into the model or context to give it to give it to the model maybe it's answering because of that so some of the questions that ask we use as ground truths are like have different needs different contexts from different uh, chunks so maybe context recall is low on the higher document because of that maybe let me ask you let me rephrase it why doesn't it work why doesn't it work whether it is long or short i mean because the chunk size is going to be the same whether it's a long document is long or short is it just the nature of the document or, or what? Or do, do I get also, did I get it wrong? Like, so the same method doesn't work, doesn't give you the same result. Like whether, when it's long or short, that's what you are saying? Yes, so like the questions are different, I think. Like maybe, I don't know, actually don't. Can you clarify uh, which, uh, like, uh, which 
or what was your da uh, the testing data? What did you use? Just like, um, what did you use for testing? Everything that you use for testing. I mean, the documents that you use for uh, for testing. What, what, what? Uh, so uh, the document is the same document. So for example, yeah, this was the questions uh, I used. So, so it, I mean, it, did you use like one of the contracts as as a testing, or did you use both, or did you use extra testing data? I I, I did use both of them. Okay. So w w the same the same testing for uh, different documents. So for example, if as you can see on the configuration, for example, I had. Uh, rag fusion semantic and hybrid uh, for for testing one document and i would use the same metric uh, for the same uh, pipeline in uh, different doc, for different group meaning one of the two but in in the interest of time maybe let's just uh, take this one later and just continue to the other presentations and we come back with more questions. Yes, sure. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you, Ambok, and thank you, Yago. Uh, so the next person was um, Yabes. Yabes, are you ready? Yes, good morning. Okay, go ahead. You can't see my screen, right? Yeah, we can see. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the business objective is described earlier. Uh, uh, ju just before your your um, presentation, Japes. So earlier, also when you present, it's good that you show us what you demonstrate. But a lot of you are just leaving what you actually do, do until the end, where it actually don't have time. So I would reverse it normally when I present what is very interesting and then show your understanding and you know uh, kind of like going through all your understanding first and presenting the results sometimes you don't have actually to show the, the result you are not focusing so maybe japanese if you can reverse it you know like let's say just let's skip the introductions but then when you explain the results go back to the introduction and what it is you can show just reversing would help okay so let me focus on the results uh, you uh, say okay, something so, the results it's like basically okay. just yeah okay so uh i, I use uh, the, uh about uh, three methodologies or three strategies that i tried let me show each strategy in the final one so the first one is just a simple rug uh, uh i used uh text splitter to recursive text splitter uh, and then open I embedding, then I used Chroma for the vector database. Uh, and I uh, just created the first drug pipeline. Then I write the prompt uh, to answer, uh, the, uh, to instruct the LLM to answer from the context. Then I invoke the answer. So from that, I get this evaluation result. I used Ragas for the evaluation, and this was the result. It's okay, but it's not good. So I try to uh, I try to use another strategy that is multi query. So, um, can I ask here? I think earlier I didn't have time. Just to ask, explain that number why it is good, why it's not good, and what does it mean? If you here, for example, by explaining, you show you demonstrate what you understand. So because you skipped your understanding of ragas whatever, so here you have a chance to share to show what does it mean thirty eight percent. And what does the okay. Facebook look? like? Just briefly, if you explain, then we know that you you know this number. When you see it, you can compare between two numbers. Okay. So the first one is the context recall. So the con the context re recall idea is that so it, the the retriever will get or will, will retrieve the context. So this context recall will try to uh, see how the how the retrieved documents are uh, ranked. So if this means this uh, this low number means that the relevant contexts are not properly uh, ranked. So which means the 
the context that should be on the top, the document or the, the good context should be on the top, is not on the top. So this context recall is showing that. The another one is the faithfulness. Faithfulness means that how is the uh, answer relevant to the question? So it's 0 0.48, for, for which is 48%. It's, it's not that good. So it is not, uh, which means the answer is not uh, uh, good uh, compared to the, uh, the answer. The, sorry, the question. The, the other one is answer relevancy. So answer relevancy means, uh, as you can see here, answer relevancy means it's up to the given prompt and the generated answer. Uh, I think I uh, 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 answer relevancy means focus on answering how uh, the pertinent the generated answer to the given prompt. And sorry, the faithfulness is consistency of the generated answer against context. I reverse it. This one, the faithfulness is the context against the generated answer. And answer relevancy is the prompt, which means the user query, to the uh, generated answer. So the faithfulness is all about the context. And the context recall is all about measuring the un unnotated answer, which means the ground truth. So we have the ground truth. I use that from the test data set. I, uh, I use the one that is given. So we have given there is a evaluation set. I use that to create a data uh, frame that contains this question and answer and also ground truth. So that's why this context recall means how is the retrieved uh, context uh, compared to the ground truth. Then the context precision means that how is the relevant items, which means context precision means uh, the how is the retrieved context are ranked. So the most important context should be on the, on the top. So it it's, uh, measures that one. And the context relevancy measures uh, the relevancy of the retrieved context based on both the, quest the question and also the context. So the, these are the metrics. So as you can see from that, uh, this is uh, what I get. Uh, so the, only the answer relevancy is good, but the other one are not good. So what I was thinking is if um, uh, the most uh, uh bad part is that it, the retrieving part is not good which means those documents are not uh, those documents that are relevant the relevant context are not retrieved and also they are that they, they are not properly ranked so i use i try to use multi uh, query rank so what it does is multi query what it does is it try to uh, re rewrite the question or the user query uh, in a different perspectives so there is a user query and it writes in different perspective. And then each of these uh, rewritten questions will retrieve uh, their own documents, their own contexts. So we will have a lot of contexts uh, and within, uh, within a different perspective. Then we can uh, find a way to union these documents. So what, what I tried is, so we have these uh, different uh, documents. And this document, then we will use a unique document from the list from each quest. We try to use the unique doc from all all all, all these retrieved uh, documents. As you can see from this Lang Smith, these are the this is the question. Then this is the output, which means this is the re rewritten questions. Uh, so this is this fa the first uh, rag pipeline is to write the question or to rewrite the question, the user question, then we will have this output, different uh, questions. And also this is given to another RAG pipeline to retrieve this document. So each each query will have its own uh, retrieved document. So then uh, we will get the union or the unique union from all these documents and we'll give it to another RAG pipeline. Then the evaluation result is this one. So as you can see, uh, the faithful first the context recall increased by 15 percent so as uh, the context recall increased by 15 percent which means that we are actually calling the, the, the context that are uh, relevant more relevant and the faithfulness also increased by 90 percent which means uh, when you compare the context and also the answer the context are relevant more relevant uh, uh, to the to the answer and the another one is the context precision by 8%, which means now uh, it is better uh, re-ranking uh, the context precision. Or, sorry, the context are 
more uh, better re-ranked. So the, it improves the evaluation. Then there is the rag fusion. So the idea of rag fusion is that all the all the previous uh, from multi query the previous um, tasks are all the same. The difference is the ranking part. So what he tries to do is to try to re-rank uh, these retrieved documents. So by uh, fusing the scores from each uh, retrieved document, it tries to re-rank it. Um, then the, but when I see the evaluation, it it is not that much. Uh, it is not good. It is even worse from multi query. Uh, so my thought is that maybe the re-ranking is not uh, good because the result is not uh, improved. So then I try to use Autogen. Maybe Autogen will uh, have a better uh, uh, results. So for Autogen, we have two diff two uh, classes, two agents. That is the retrieved assistant agent, and the other one is uh, retrieved user proxy agent. So the retrieved assistant agent, we tell it to be a knowledgeable assistant. We write the prompt. Uh, your, ta your task is to uh, answer questions based on the document. So we have the prompt. And from the RAC proxy agent, this will retrieve. It, it, this agent will do the retrieving part. So it uses uh, the document path and also the it, it have the chunk size. I use 250 uh, chunk token size. Then the, uh, I use the chroma uh, for the vector database. So by using this, I try to uh, initiate a chat with this. Uh, rag proxy agent so that it, I could uh, get uh, answer. So this is the just uh, summary. So it costs us about zero point zero nine two dollar for uh, one question, and there, there is the prompt token and also the uh, completion tokens. And uh, this is the just the backing. Just let me uh, show but, but you. What I, no, no, like you you left you laid the ball. It's like. You did something and you are actually not comparing. You costed something, but there is no, we don't see any result. Like, what is its context? What is, uh, what yes. is the context precision? What is, you know, that? What is the Ragas evaluation of this? Yes, I tried to use Ragas for this evaluate for the autogen, but I was having difficulty for uh, especially autogen because especially the context part. I was not able to uh, uh, get the context from the autogen uh, directly from uh, the code. But I tried to see from the terminal. Uh, I got I got the context. Just let me show you uh, to make it a little bit clear. Uh, uh, let me show you the demo so that I could show uh, the context and also that. But I didn't actually use Ragas for the evaluation for Autogen. So this is my front end. Uh, I tried to, I, you can choose file from this. So I tried the Robinson, so one of the documents. So I, this is this uh, Robinson. This uh, front end is built based on the Autogen. I will show you the back end, how it works. So from the Robinson, we can ask, we have these different questions. So for, for example, I can ask the first question. So let me show you uh, uh, the backing. So as you can see, uh, I asked the question and this is the answer. So what did it, what it, it did is that uh, it has this one. Uh, so my question is, uh, let me start. So, uh, uh, this is from before. So this is the, this is the where it starts. So uh, this is the question: Who are the parties to the agreement? To the agreement and what are their defined names? This is the user question, and this is the context that it gets. So it, it, this the context is this different context. It right it 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 uh, retrieved from the document. So it's uh, a lot of contexts. Then 
uh, the assistant uh, will give us uh, the answer. The parties are, these are the agreement, and it, tell, it tells us the company and also Mr. Jackson who are uh, to ask the company and the, the advisor respectively. So this is how the question and the answer works. It gets the context and also uh, it gets the question uh, the question and to answer it. And I can try another one, maybe. Uh, there, there is no need, there is no need. I think it's just like, fine, we, we see it, but we, we need to need, you have been mentioning numbers, so unless you compare it to the numbers, it doesn't make sense. Um, I mean, we're, we're not seeing comparative analysis, right? So this is just a very different analysis than the, the previous one. In principle, it would be good to compare them. But okay, good, it works at least, but then you have to do the same thing. If you want to use this one as a comparison, as a metric, that means the visual inspection, you have to do the same for others. So otherwise, you know, there, there is no need. I mean, basically, it's just a one sample. Yeah, I, I just did uh, the manually this uh, for the autogen. I just did manually, manually asking the question and see the answer. To... Yeah. So in principle, you could implement the same thing, the same al all algorithms outputting and seeing them at least manually comparing. You know, it's like one of them at least. It's like you, you can't just for all of them use something and for this one use some other metric. Just go when it's good. It's good you implement it, but it has it's not complete, so it's it's fine. I mean, we understand the time issue. Okay. Uh, okay. So the, that's it then. Uh. Yeah, I'm Tina. You. Uh, yes. Um, okay. Sorry. Um, thank you. Thank you, Yabas. I think we can move on to the next person. Um, Mister, are you ready? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, go ahead. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear it. Okay. Okay, so um, I will start with the basic rug implementation. Uh, so uh, it has a user interface, a backend API, and uh, we have a knowledge base that's in PDF format. I just converted it into the PDF format. And for data segmentation, I use two strategies, which is simple chunking and uh, cosine similarity chunking. Uh, and for the uh, retriever, uh, the retriever component uh, it's supposed to take the text chunks and uh, chunks and uh, it uses the open AI embedding to convert them into vector representations uh, then this will be stored into the chroma vector store then the generator will be responsible for uh, generating the answer uh, so uh, i used the gpt for llm so uh, based on the retrieved document in the user query it will provide us uh, the answer. So uh, let's just go to the evaluation and uh, how my optimization techniques uh, were able to improve the performance of the RAG system. So uh, for the evaluation, I used RAG. I created a set of for the a set containing the user question, the generated answer by the RAG system, the retrieved context and the ground truth or the expected answer that it should evaluate. So uh, I try to evaluate the answer relevancy, faithfulness, context recall, context precision, answer similarity, and uh, answer correctness. Uh, so this is before using, these results are before using any kind of uh, optimization techniques. As you can see, the answer correctness is around 0.4, uh, more or less, the result seems fine, but uh, there is always a room for improvement. So, for enhancing so can, the can you, can you explain it here? Just what you're understanding each of them and what that potentially mean. Uh, okay. 
So um, answer relevancy means um, how much the it it just measured like uh, how much the generated uh, answers are similar to the uh, user screenshot, how much they are relevant to the question. Uh, the faithfulness says that uh, explains how much they the generated answer is like uh, true to the I mean how much is it like related to the retrieved uh, the retrieved uh, portion also the context uh, recall uh, if, it, if it is still possible if it's still possible I mean I know that I'm pressuring you but just the differences also you highlight just uh, yeah. so just you know, what is that answer relevancy you know measures that uh, faithfulness is not measuring so just some kind of giving us good way to okay. interpret the result you know why is one small why is you know why do why can why should we expect for example answer similarity is high but answer relevance is low you know like how can we understand that uh you mean like uh after the optimization or like no, 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 here, like uh, here on this one you can see answer relevancy and then answer similarity right now yeah. you have one answer similarity is higher almost about 80 percent while answer yeah. relevancy is about 66 percent you know you know okay. what, what so, does it uh, mean and yeah in that number yeah. answer similarity is like comparing uh, the answer generated by the llm uh, to the predefined ground truth or the answer that was given to us on the question in the answer set while answer relevancy is like comparing the answer generated by the llm uh, relative to the um context that we retrieved from the document that's why we see a difference here and what does that imply what do you think it's implying uh so uh i think um the llm is like more providing a similar answer to the uh, to the test uh, to the test said but um the relevancy of the answer when i mean uh it might not be like very accurate when it comes to the context that's like for example um a very relevant if a very relevant context is not ch chunked is not retrieved from the system the answer relevancy can be smaller fantastic great yeah okay so uh for enhancing the right pipeline i was able to implement only two strategies which the first one was to change the ch chunking strategy from native chunking to uh semantic similarity based chunking using cosine similarity uh, this uh, i was expecting that it will improve the answer relevancy as i told you earlier it will like um it it will make more uh, similar uh, semantically uh, similar um uh, similar chunks uh, it will group them together so the answer relevancy in the faithfulness of the rug pipeline will be improved the second one was to uh, generate hypothetical answer first from the llm and then uh, integrate that answer together with the retrieved document and send it back to llm again so um, after doing this uh, optimization techniques the result was like uh, very interesting answer relevancy and uh, faithfulness uh, faithfulness and answer correctness were improved however context recall context precision and answer similarity were not improved in fact they dropped down um, so uh, to see the numbers the answer relevancy uh, increased in 14 percent the faithfulness around 13 up to 14 percent and the context recall and precision answer similarity uh, have dropped down uh, so uh, my explanation for this is that the chunking process might be excluding some relevant informations. Uh, so I'm planning further to just without using yeah, the yeah. explain it a bit further. Just like what do you mean? Like what does that? What is recall and precision is measuring and why they could be dropping while relevancy, which is also measuring some form of context with respect to the generated answer, is increasing okay so uh context recall um it measures it measures how much relevant context uh, have been retrieved so maybe uh, my respect is to that, what uh respect to the the question the user question but what is the, so what is the difference between answer relevancy and context recall then answer relevant uh, 
So because earlier well, we said the generator answer. Relevancy, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it um, may, uh, how relevant uh, answers are generated uh, according to the, I mean, uh, it compares the relevancy of the answer in the user question. Context recall, it's, uh, it like calculates the relationship between the context that's uh, segmented and the question that was, uh, I mean, Okay. 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 Uh, I'm getting so, a so what does that mean? No, no. So, it, it uh, is okay. It is. It is very okay to get confused. And it's okay to check, and it's just the most important part is to get it to okay, so, convince yourself. So uh, me, you know, think, wait. Yeah. It is fine. Like, and I, I also don't know if I know. I, you know, but so it's okay, and you're doing really well already, and that's the most essential part of what you do. You know, doing something anyone can do, but interpreting what you do is what is different right so take time and maybe then you might get it almost and then you can refer to a like a definition and you can try to explain it okay so uh, uh the reason why i think that context recall and precision dropped is because like uh, after implementing the hypothetical query generation uh it gives us um, a hypothetical answer, which might be very incorrect. So that might affect the retrieval, uh, I mean, the retrieval process. So uh, when the uh, LLM uh, responds a hypothetical uh, answer, it might like be very different and it might cause the retriever to chunk irrelevant parts. That's why I think uh, this uh, drop downs happen. However, the answer. I still have I'm not convinced. So maybe, maybe you, you were almost there, but I'm now even more confused. So the answer relevancy, you can confirm by checking in the internet as well, just or if you have a document, another one. So you mean answer relevancy is the generated answer, how relevant it is for the- To the user like, question. To the, is that to the user question, to the context? So that one make, make sure that is the case. So, you know, what are we relating in the answer relevancy? Okay, so yeah, the answer relevancy, I'm sure it's like uh, the uh, comparing between the generated answer and the user question, how much relevant is the answer that uh, the, the RAC system is giving? Uh, and how, how, do, how does it, do, how do you think it knows that? Um, so uh, I think uh, it will like, um, that cosine similarity type, like between in measures, how similar they are, the generated. Yes, uh, exactly. Okay. I, okay. Yeah, I think it will measure like the um, keywords and the semantic meanings of the so, result. Which means it's good. Question. That means it's it's not with, it is not with the ground truth. So it is. It is not with the ground truth, but it's with basically if there is an answer, and if there is a question, it's a distance between user question and answer yes yes not with the ground truth where uh, answer similarity is the, with the ground truth okay um and then so we have now context recall which is how much the context has with respect to the generated answer or with respect to a question what or with what so context recall is like how much relevant content uh, that's like retrieved is included in the answer it measures that okay and and trying to also check because i feel like okay so the context recall say it again the context recall it measures like uh, how much of the relevant context that's retrieved from the re, that the retriever uh, retrieved is included in the answer so basically uh, we have the context that's like uh, that the context that the retriever generated from the pdfs right how much of that is included in the answer it measures that in the, in the answer what do you, you mean how much of the answer is included in the context and one yeah, is big exactly. in the other okay yeah okay so the ground truth or what not the ground truth the one generated by the generated so right. so yeah. you are saying so this is much more the context recall is testing much more how much the llm actually is uh 
generated something within the context. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So within the context of the, the retrieved context, the document. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So the context usually means the retrieved ones. Can I so can within, I jump in here? Yeah. Sorry. Go on. So the definition she was she was giving is not exactly correct. Um yeah, I'm just trying to like uh, if uh, I don't know if like uh, the context recall, this is what I was asking about, about before. Context recall is uh, comparing the generated or the retrieved, the retrieved, uh, um, the, the, the piece that was retrieved compared to the ground truth, which is the retrieved, the context that was provided in like as a ground truth. So you're comparing these two and seeing how much of the ground truth context is included in your retrieved uh chunk or like retrieve context so um how much of that is included is what is the precision is um so what i was saying before also to Abu Bakr, if uh, if you provided like if your chunks are very big is very is very likely that you get a high context recall because a bigger chunk is more likely to to include the, the ground truth context but like um, maybe you will have lower other like metrics like the uh, context precision and other stuff. So I'm just like um, yeah. correcting them. Here. So so that means it is measuring. It is the LLM that is measuring how much of the context or how much the context that is retrieved has information about the question. Did you say the question or the answer for the context record? Uh, it's uh, like so in that if you in your test data you will have a question answer and a context yeah. so, so let's if, call them let's call them the question the ground truth the generator truth or the generated answer so i want to know which one is the context report so we know it is about the context that is retrieved with and what you you said it uh, earlier is that the generated uh, answer or the actual ground truth is a is a ground truth context so um okay so, so you're it is to your, context. Your, okay so that means it's still correct what we are saying is that i think she was still in that sense right it context recall measures actually the llm's performance it's it's, it's measuring the retriever part not not the generation no, that's what no. i was trying yeah so okay then then explain to me that's exactly what i am trying to really nail which one like if it is about the generated answer then it is not about anything it's about the llm because the llm generates an answer within a context and if you are right. comparing the generated answer and the context then it's the llm performance right so yeah you, uh, so, so the measurement it? yeah so the ragas i don't know if, you, if you're using ragas and Raga's definition for a context uh, context recall is not comparing the LLM part, it's not generation part. No, no, it's no, just no, forget, forget what it is, the inference, let's forget, but what it is, just what it is, let's 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 say. What it is, it is the generated answer with respect to the context it's provided. Is that correct? No. Um, okay. I'm just Very saying, good. yeah, it is comparing the context retrieved with the uh, ground truth context so when i'm saying ground okay, truth okay. context so, yeah so. For, forget ground truth to context just ground truth say ground truth because there's yeah, no but, other way. okay but the thing is that uh in the data set usually in the testing data set you get a ground truth answer but then you also get the context which is the piece of okay. the document that is relevant to this to okay. this question so you are providing that was my understanding but okay so that means is she providing a, a true a ground context a ground truth context. i mean let's let, that means a context that is actually correct are you providing that mister so in your ragas evaluation do you provide question answer and then a ground truth and then a ground truth context are you providing that yes okay so you you prepare the ground truth context by hand no, uh, the question and answer said uh, the answer part. I used it as a ground conte uh, truth context. I mean, as a ground truth, and, oh. and yeah. Uh, okay, so that's what uh, it explains. Okay, so that means the ground truth is also used as ground truth context. 
Yes, uh, I'm not sure about what ground truth context is like. So that uh, my let, data let's, let's, yeah, no, no, contains... let, let's just let's make it straight so that when if I have a, a paragraph and the paragraph contains a ground truth, I can pass the paragraph as a ground truth context. So are you doing that? Or, you know, I, I want to know exactly so that we can explain. Okay, so what I'm doing is like uh, the question, uh, like I can show you here. Uh, so um, these are the four components that I'm passing to the RAGAS, the user question. Um, then the context that the retriever, um, the retriever prepared, that will be um, the, for the the context that the retriever prepared from the PDF files, and then let's the, call them. The okay, so I, I feel I feel there's a lot of vocabulary that is misused. Let's just like the generated like the retriever. Just it's just a context. Always the retriever pre provides. So yeah, the retrieved. Okay, so the retrieved. And then, then there's the question, then there's the ground truth, which is the answers that were provided in the Q and A. So, so you're not providing any more. Any other cold ground Any other truth ground truth? truth? No. Yes. You don't you didn't provide the fourth component, which is context, which the correct context, let's call it, you know. Normally ground truth means just call what you know is actually the, the correct one. So you didn't provide the manual context, not the yeah. For that, context. I'm just like uh, uh, for the ground truth. Uh, just like I said, there was a Q and the A. So there are two ground truths answers. now. Yeah. So let's there let's say ground truths. Ground truths. There are two ground truths. So let's only use ground truths answer and ground truths context. So did you provide a ground truths context? Ground truths answer. I would say. Okay. Okay. So then. In that case, maybe empty none. What does that mean? Because that where do where does it get the ground truth context? Where do you think it gets? Like if we know, anyone can answer as well. But just because I I just want to understand. So yes, I mean you're looking at the um, sorry. Can you? So looking at the like the scores. Yeah that she is providing here can you uh, mister can you show us like the screen the, um, the presentation uh, yes just stop at the yeah which one i mean like stop at one of these like uh, yes. evaluation metrics uh, slides i'm just trying to look at what before, yeah i'm just trying one. to look at yes at the metrics that you are so the last you showed us, which is the difference. Yes. But it, I it think is it's slide different. number eight nine. Can you show us that one? Oh, uh, this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. One second. Um. Okay. So. Answer uh, right. Okay, so um, so can, can you repeat again your question, Yamamoto? So I I'm so not I mean, sure. Larry is saying. I think what I I think I understand what you mean because it sounds correct for me. That's what normally recall is calculated. That means right. you have a ground truth context that you pass, and then there is a context that is gen, you know that is basically on the fly extracted. And then you are comparing yeah. the similar cosine similarity, and you could calculate that. Normally, right. that's the case. But in this case, uh, she's not passing any ground truths. And then what I am seeing, Hillary is saying, is similar. Like that means, in principle, one should pass that. But manually and get it from the or use our retriever. Now passing in the ground truths instead of question. I, I maybe Hillary uh, that even doesn't make sense then. So are yeah. we? What, what does it mean? He means like using the 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 answer the with the ground truth answer to as a to retrieve from our from our database. I'm uh, getting I'm getting the context there. Okay, maybe Hillary, that's what you mean. Explain. Yeah. 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 What I mean is, it retrieve the context given the ground truth instead of passing the question as we usually do. Okay. Okay. So because, that means because okay, I yeah. does not get the context of ground truth. It, 
it only has one context, which is authentications. So what it does is therefore it it would use the generated answer, and then it takes that one, and then retrieves a context and compares that context with our earlier context, the one. And then so in that sense, what we are saying is that if the answer generated from the context were right, then the answer should now uh, the the reverse engineering it should now also be able to relate but that's not correct and that's harder to interpret because it's not a question it's I, an I answer think maybe you missed what he said like he is he's suggesting not using the generated answer but like the actual answer the correct answer the ground truth meaning the one that we know is the correct answer and then pass so now that. it's answer by answer so you now have now three contexts that you are comparing to evaluate this one is the context earlier you generated be, because yeah. of the question and then the other one is a context that you extracted because of the ground truth and the other one is a ground truth like the context you retrieved because of the generated answer is that correct no okay <laughs> then let's what does it mean then because it just no. makes sense then like because in what what is being compared like for me i still haven't understood can i can i say something yeah. yes um, yeah so with ragas, you have you have uh, three, four, four parameters. You have to pass question, context, the generated answer, and expected output or ground truth. So with the the context is you get uh, you retrieve the context of the question, and then with those two, the context and question, you get the generated answer from LLM. Then that's yeah. when you pass into the. Uh, to the uh, to the rug with the ground truth, but you uh, we can't have generated answer with uh, context for generated answer. It's only for the question, and also it doesn't allow us to pass ground truth for the context for the ground truth. So it's only ground truth for the question. So how do we measure? So what I what I want to understand, I understand so, that. How do we measure? So, how do we understand context recall that? So context recall is how much the context aligns with the ground truth. So that will be, you, you have the ground truth and you want to see if the context aligns with that one, the context will re re retrieve from the question. So it generally tests the retrieval, only the retrieval. For the generator the answer, that will be uh, faithfulness. How, how it's going to- Okay, so yeah. do we know how, how it measures? I mean, the only reason why I'm asking is that because now answer, what is answer relevancy? Answer relevancy is how it's relevant to the question, how the generated answer is relevant to the question. Because, and the, you know, what it means is that the, the question has generated a context and that context generated an answer and that answer is now, so it's, um, if the context was wrong, then the generated answer would be wrong too. And so are we then saying, is that the, you know, because answer and questions are not, are not uh, comparable. So that means you can't do vector on both. So you can only ask whether the answer is, whether the generated answer is in the context, whether the generated answer, and to know whether the generated answer is in the context uh, I, I i'm i'm still not sure then so yes uh, so, sorry i about to just to to yeah. see this is, is i think think it's easier to just look at the raga's documentation and understanding this so, so what you are saying is correct you cannot compare the answer to the question directly so what they do in what they explain in the in the document is that they use the answer the generated answer and they pass this answer to an llm to generate questions yeah. So they generate okay. multiple yeah, exactly. questions, so then, yeah. Okay, so okay, say it again. So they use. So yes, they use uh, like the generated answer yeah, and, and generate reverse questions. engineering, yes, to generate uh, n questions, a number of questions, the and then from no, the from the no, the, no, no, they just pass the generated answer to an LLM and say like given this answer can you tell what okay. was the question 
and then they will get the multiple variants, look like n number of questions, and then they compare these questions to the original question and see how much. And, and that will give you what? What does that give you? Uh, so you will get like cosine similarity between the, the original question. No, no, but, and yeah, but the metric, the metric, what is the metric name for that? This is the answer relevancy. Okay, so answer relevancy is that it's question to question. So that means question that the first the user give, question that is generated by the generated answer. Okay, so that is uh, one. Now, can we think of the what is the context recall? How is it measured? Oh, yeah, so like uh, just again looking at the document, if they say the context recall, it's like measures the extent to which the retrieved context aligned with the annotated answer treated as a ground truth. Okay. So that's what okay. this is the definition in the, on the document. Yeah. Okay, and I think that as Abu Bakr said, like the, the faithfulness and relevance we now know, it's about answer to answer or question to question uh, in a, some systematic manner while the context is um yeah go on up Bakar. yeah but maybe the confusion is uh, what you are saying is between the context and the answer generated by the llm and the ground truth which is also the answer maybe no no but, i mean no no i think it's like you know it's apple to apple for me it's a statistics and it's very simple you cannot compare for example question and answer they are apple and orange Right, and yes, you can but only but on the faithfulness part. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but on the faithfulness no, no. part, you can actually reverse engineer the question. The I answer, think but answer, there, to answer. Yeah, answer, yeah, the answer yeah, to I answer. Mean, I, that's fine. Like the yeah. answer to answer, I understand. So that means you have an answer, and then you are asking what is a possible answer from from this, and then you can then compute. I mean that that one I'm fine. So so the faithfulness is answer to answer. That means that's good. Uh, relevance is question to question, uh, that is fine. Context is basically an in operation. So that means we are saying how much of the the actual context, uh, the ground truth. So we are now also comparing with the ground truth. So with the ground truth, how much of the ground truth is inside the context? And the precision is, of course, it measures usually precision means noise. It's a ranking. So that means how much it's, it's ranked, so that I understand. Okay, so now I think it's just I want to understand this good plot. So it is saying the question is relevant. So that means given that the question and and we get a generated answer and we we do some questions that has increased. That your answer relevancy has increased. So that um that means so that means the answer is actually in all aspects answering exactly the question so the answer is up actually really about so that means there isn't so it's again LLM we are measuring a lot more that there isn't bias either in the question formulation or in the context. It's actually made, uh, then it is fine. So the con within the context that is there, you know, the, the, the question is answered faithfully or, uh, you know, it's relevant. But unfortunately, your um, context doesn't, doesn't have that much information about or it has decreased the information about the actual the ground truth it doesn't hold as much but then on another sense you have also answered correctness that actually increased um yeah abu Bakr. Uh, so i i think i'm a little bit confused maybe the definition is different but from what I did was the context uh, recall was low on the first try. So was low means is from the from what I saw from different metrics. For example, the relevancy is just was low, like thirty eight or something. So, but the it, context yeah, recall, what does it mean? What does it mean? I mean, yeah. for me, so numbers, your, yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. So to my understanding, the cost the the context recall in Ragas 
checks for each statement from the ground rules. Ground rules means uh, they just we answer. have like yeah the answer. For example, the legal team might yes. actually question and it's answer. It's an in, in operation. Yeah. If you if you think yes. of it, it's like whether a semantic in operation. So whether yes. semantically the answer is inside the the context. So yeah, the, so that means there there must be something wrong with the retrieved context or how we retrieved it. For example, the question might be. Uh, but the no, correctness is high. So the correctness yes. is high. Okay. So, Mister. Okay. What do you? Yeah. Uh, like um, I was going to give you the explanation for that. In my opinion, okay. I think that the context recall and precision they both decreased because uh, after implementing the hypothetical answer generation, which might lead the like the LLM gives like hypothetical answer, which might be very far from the correct answer first like before retrieving the document then uh, i concatenated that uh, llm answer with the original question and pass it to the retriever so when the tri retriever um retrieves uh, data from the pdfs i think uh, it might be misled because of the hypothetical answer that was provided by the llm first okay that's okay. my explanation so I understand. So can someone just explain to me also answer correctness, the metric, what is it defined? Is it just comparing the ground truths and the generated answer, how different they are? Does that mean? Okay. So then that means it's actually the, it is actually the LLM did well in giving a good answer, even if the context might not be right. So what it is saying to this one, if I understand. So that means it has increased in terms of its correctness, but even if, uh, and there might be issue just that there might be confusion. It's maybe just because the context recall is usually measured as in operation and there maybe that, what is the size that you use in the token for the context? Um, 1,000 for native ch chunking. Yeah, so that's probably the reason because there's a lot of noise. Maybe they influence it. If we look at, if you used a smaller one, normally that wouldn't probably happen because, in principle, the two must be correlated. The one context recall and answer correctness should be normally correlated positively. But as you increase the size, this should start negatively correlating because a lot of noise would influence the vector estimation. So, Okay, let's. I think this is good, but I, you know, what I want. Um, so this is the reason why I posed you. It's great. You can continue the uh, the the presentation. But all about precision it is understanding exactly and explaining to what makes sense to the point why something who which one is positively correlating. Do we expect and interpreting this is what you are gonna be hired not to run because you know now to run these things everyone can run but to really understand them very few can do that so i think it's great i think um yeah let's continue so this this seems then um understandable at least and good everyone contributed and understanding and thanks and Tinan as well uh, for providing the actual uh, definitions okay let's continue thank you sorry for taking time Proceed, uh, Mister. Hello, is that my connection? Mister, are you there? No, you can't hear me. So, Mister, are you there still? I can see your screen, but don't hear you. Yeah, let's let's give her a, a minute or so and then um, maybe you can proceed to when mr comes she might continue but um then can we proceed i think there was Mahmouba. yeah Mahmouba and uh, yes Mahmouba, are you ready 
and also okay. one that yes you can go ahead okay Can you see my screen? Okay, the business objective is already presented, so I will proceed to the implementation part. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, for the uh, for building the RAP system, I have first split up the document to using the recursive character split uh, text splitter. And then I use the splitting chunks into tokens. Okay. Then I created the embedding function by using this uh, sentence transformer embedding function. Then uh, I loaded the uh, embedded uh, data to chroma DB. Then building the retriever in generator was the next part to, to, to build the retriever. Uh, okay, so we'll see the retriever. I have used different strategies. Like first, I used the query expansion by using the, the first general. First, uh, we give the query, so you, it uses that query and it expands the query to. Uh, it give us five uh, generated queries, and then I. Uh, used the cross encoder re-ranking functionality to re-rank these uh, queries and generate the uh, correct the relevant document and the generator uses uh, openai then uh, generate uh, answer using the retrieve documents <laughs> so the backend i have used the uh, plus api then this was the final Mm. front end uh, part and then I use the RACAS to implement my my RAC pipeline <clears throat> and I have used these matrices the <clears throat> answer relevancy the feasibleness the context recall and the, the, the context precision and <clears throat> so the final result was <coughs> sorry <coughs> so the final result I got was that text precision was like this and the, cost, the context recall uh, 0.75, the visefulness was 1, and the answer relevancy was 0 0.9. <clears throat> and this was the on, on the, how many of on how many of the uh, like the QA is this uh, have you evaluated on all four. of them? Four, no, I have used four, yeah, for the final, I have used the <clears throat> these four, um, okay, yeah, these four questions. Okay. in this uh, ground process and the uh, final the final result i have got with this one so then to show the demo i have used react for the front end and it asks to upload Oh, I think it's running, but okay. Now the file is uploaded, and we can ask the question here. So yeah, it gave us an answer that the company owns uh, IP and this, this is it. So if you have any questions, 
I think I make it short because of time. And if you have any questions, I can. So you didn't try the like the autogen part? No, I haven't tried that. Okay. Okay. I think it's great. I mean, I think the just we the number of tastes like what have you improved? I mean, so one of the things that I like from what Mister was presenting is just showing differences in. And I think others also have demonstrated something. Did you do that? Did you demonstrate how it's improved when you change? Yeah, I have tried to do that and to improve the the efficiency. Yeah, I have used these strategies like uh, crossover re-ranking. Did it, it give you the most improved? So, and, yeah, yeah. and do you know why? Yeah. I have used the strategy to improve it, and it it improved it. What did it What did it improve? Is it just algorithm? And so if it's algorithm, result, like the final result, it was giving me the relevant answer. So the algorithm, when you change the algorithm, you get improved results. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so the algorithm is the retrieval you are changing, right? Is that what, what which algorithm were you changing? So I have used first uh, the extra query expansion, and from this query expansion, it uh, it writes a uh, unique documents. It uses a uh, unique documents, and it's re uh, it ranks the it ranks the the documents. So so this is the retriever. So, so that means when when you apply ranking, you actually improved. Yeah, yeah. So, I have so ranked that's it was the first implementation for the cross encoder re-ranking have done. Yeah. Okay. So that's a and good this, uh, this, this a one. good uh, element with respect to I think it was Japanese. So you had you had actually the the negative. So as you predicted, it might be a new ranking because it seems yeah, to improve yeah. here yeah it, it uses the higher highly the higher scores and and it by how much score. did it improve and by how much did it improve the ordering i was trying it so like i, I haven't uh, got that yeah roughly yeah that, that would have been a good number to have either in your report or you know the, these are the things that are very important i think you guys are under selling yourself like you do the work but you you don't you're not seeing the value of what actually is more important so this is something to improve it's like you're actually doing the work but you're not you know it, it's like as if like you you go for you know mining and you get gold but you don't see it then you you keep searching for gold um and i think that is what i am seeing sometimes so just make sure to, to learn, you know, how to see the value that you are actually mining, you know, like you know, what, what you are looking for. So you have achieved it, but it seems it's not actually presented. Maybe, you know, in terms of number, I would still want you to send it, what, how much improvement you have, like just plot it something like what Mr. did and just share it in Slack. Okay, great, thanks. And I think Mr. can continue if unless there are other questions uh, by anyone. And then also I think was that uh, a demo then afterwards uh, that was a Tamskin or it's Johannes. Someone. Eh? Johannes had a demo to oh, present okay. first. Then after Mr. Mr. Do you want to continue? Finish. Uh, yeah, I've finished. Uh, the only thing that's part is uh, what I'm planning to further improve and maybe a demo. But uh, it's yeah. fine. So I mean, if we have time did you, only. Yeah. Did, did you implement anything with autogen or, or not? No, I didn't implement anything with autogen because uh, I was having really uh difficulties in installing autogene and uh, it was already too late uh i think but 
my plan is like uh, further maybe to... just can you give us a demo just give us a demo and then uh, let's and also i, re I remember dj had raised a hand I'm not sure if it was just question but or presentation but yeah go for the demo and then let's go to a demo of your hands okay Uh, okay, can you see my screen? So, uh, as you can see, the response time is like... Uh, very long it, it doesn't like respond quickly so maybe uh implementing autogene can further improve the performance of uh, the response in time i hope uh, i mean for this table we are unable to see ah okay yeah good yeah like we see sorry like I, yeah okay but yeah, I think it provides a relatively good answer. Okay, so what is what did what does it make you to say good answer? Is it just one? You know, can you type? You know, what's my name? Uh, I think it will answer like it's not in the document, maybe. Are you using sockets to build this or just no, normal API? No, normal API. I'm just sending the questions. Yeah, that, that could have improved as well, just if you used more, and as well as not only sockets, but also streaming. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, and so when you demonstrate, I think this is not only for Mr. For anyone, you have to demonstrate a few things that convinces, you know, that supports what you are saying. You know, just one thing and say, like, this is good or, you know, that, that usually means that's a sign off that you actually are not do not know what evidence is. So it's important to demonstrate evidence, you know, that supports um, what you mean. Like so just especially in the demo but great okay then Johannes thanks Johannes, do we have presentation? Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay, sorry, it's taking a little time to start the app, but.
sorry guys uh, my pc can add a lot of things So if I ask, what yeah, is already, yeah. yeah. So for the first return, it will take some time, but, but the reason for that is it's my CPU, my computer, till start everything. And, but after the first response, uh, who are, who will get the response maybe in five seconds, six seconds. And uh, maybe if you want, I can ask it. This is, by the way, for uh, a retrieval key window from a little using this method with uh, not using the chain type from chain type and maybe let me ask it this question and so our front end looks like this one uh, this is the user and the ai response so you will show us the previous one. But one thing I noticed with with my code is when first I used, as I said, the chat open AI end, for example, let me ask you, the memory isn't, isn't working uh, with this one. Uh, the first method I used was, as I said, in, the, uh, in my pre presentation, the chat open AI end, the memory was working on that. And I thought it's going to work, but uh, on, Saturday night, uh, on Saturday night, when I tried the memory, uh, it wasn't working. So maybe this is the other limit limitation as well. So that means in, if it is a chat, it, 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 is the memory. it, it works with the memory, with the chain. Yes, mode. yes. Yes, but uh, for, for some reason, I didn't find the exact reason for it. But when I use retrieval QA enables from LLM and from chain type, the memory isn't working. Okay. okay, but that's good. So that means you can have a dialogue, and it's in principle, it can confirm, it can give you reason. So you have implemented the whole chat history part. Yes, yeah. So uh, for the chat open AI for the first implementation, yes, yeah. Oh, good. Great. Thanks. I think. Yeah. Is there an another one? Anyone else? Hillary? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to present to share my minutes. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. Should I stop sharing? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. No, I think this is good. Um, I think the, the only thing I would say, if it is in a demo, just make sure, yeah, I mean, it's, it happens. So I think what you did is great, but make, yeah, I would say the demonstration plan it a little bit more such that uh, you can execute, you can impress the person. I mean, I know how demonstrations are hard, but it would still be people might not understand. So just prepare like some impressive, like the flow, the presentation flow especially when you have time it's like um, to do so 
Uh, okay. But I also was looking forward if you could have used comparing again the autogen you have implemented something, and it would be useful to know like you know the, the comparisons as well in, in the demo. If you in, integrate, that would be great as well. Okay, maybe I can show that as well. You want to see uh, the autogen? But so how, do, how do we see that? Is it just the results? Because right now, okay, no, uh, it's I just want, I want to be yeah. able to compare. Like I want to be able to compare just what is also not yet so far I have seen is that I want to be able to compare exactly, you know, apple to apple. That means you got something from this re this algorithm, you got something from this algorithm. So mm -hmm. like in, in a demo, if you have that, just let me know and I will I will be able to see later. Okay, yeah, yeah I, I see that in my limitation as well, yeah. Uh, the, uh, even though I implemented different uh, implementation, the metrics or I used was different for each of them. Yeah, yeah maybe, yeah. It okay. should be one uh, improvement uh, yeah. metrics for each of them. Yeah, great. Thanks, thanks, Jens. Um, so, uh, I'm going straight to the uh, to the results. I'll explain also what I used here. Right. So here, here it was just a simple implementation. I had I used a recursive splitter by Langchain. Uh, initially, I started with a character splitter, but uh, it wasn't effective. Uh, it would cut off words, so I went with the recursive splitter, and then so the first one was. Uh, because I had 200, uh, this is 200 uh, chunk size. I had 0 0.24 on correctness. Uh, so that means you know, the answer didn't match the ground truth as expected. And uh, But I, w I went further to reduce the metrics. So I, I reduced the metrics to four. So if I can focus only on the correctness, the faithfulness, so the faithfulness is less, so it was, the answer wasn't consist, consistent to the context. So there was a problem with the context and the real um, focus on recon. Uh, it, I it was saying that it was performing better, but uh, uh, the, the context was, I, I don't, uh, this one was the first try, so I don't think it was well. Uh, maybe now here I can say it's the LLM generation. If the context was right, the LLM generation was that pure. So from there on, I tried with a, uh, I tried with a uh, Cohere, Cohere re-ranking. So these were the results. Uh, when I, mm, when I tried with Cohere re-ranking, but uh, here I went, I, I skipped uh, like several things. So here, I implemented rank fusion coherent ranking, and uh, it was generating multiple queries. Um, for, uh, let me, I didn't put it right. So let me. No, let me understand. So now yeah. you have faithfulness one. So what? It means earlier someone says it is just again the same as uh, answer, yeah. like answer relevancy, but in the yeah. answers in the ground truth sense. What does that mean? Is that just now the ground, the generated answer, and the ground truths are now aligned? Or, no, or no, is it no? Uh -huh. uh, it is the generated answer is consistent with the context. So that means the answer was found in the context. Let me say that. So it means that the context was appropriate, but uh, despite this, uh, the context was containing the answers. Uh, that's what I can say. Uh, and no, then, no, but, but yeah, that, that is con no, that's context record, right? So uh, if you are referring to the if you are referring to the context to the ground truth, that's a context record, right? So the mm, context record. Uh, no. Okay. So the faithfulness is more whether the generated answer is in the context. Is that the case? Or yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. The generated answer was in the context. 
So the context recall was um, how the context aligned with the ground truth. So it was again mostly performing well because the, the context that was provided was the ground truth was found in the in the context. So this one. So I, I imagine yeah. I imagine you used GPT four all or GPT three point five. Um, yeah, I used GPT for all, but even with using the, GPT the, the reason, the reason yeah. why you would get one is because GPT four is good. Like okay. in a way that if you if you had used three point five, I think some of them they were not getting one, mostly yeah. because these faithfulness measures actually, um, uh, basically some of the limitations of the the LLM as well because whether it is within a context or outside the context yeah yeah so okay so give, given given these um given these results uh the so the context was okay uh because i it was containing the ground truth and, and the generated answer but the problem was the answer itself uh how it was aligning with the ground truth so uh, I didn't expand this, but um, you can see it uh, at some point. What was answer relevancy? Do you know? Do you know the answer relevancy? Which is the question? Uh, no. The question. Uh, how the answer was relevant to the question? Uh, yeah. No, I, no. There is, I, there is uh, an answer relevancy metric that you are not yeah, showing yeah. here. I actually, how is it? Is uh, it? Mm -hmm. I didn't put it as a priority because even with who are like even without the con even with the context didn't have the part that contained the answer it was still performing well i think i have it here so yeah but it might change right it might change it, it, it is not i think the most we have seen is that they are correlate like mm -hmm. these are important to see so that to know mm -hmm. as you increase something how they are changing because these are affecting different reasons so right now for example if you go back to your cohere okay this is the cohere result uh no this is that's not yeah correct. if you go back to the cohere result so what you see is that the answer correctness even if uh, is highly now correlates it doesn't actually that much correlates to anything because you get 0 0.37 even when recall and precision are the same you know, yeah. faithfulness, recall, and precision are the same, but you get so many um, variations along that. So that means some other factor is influencing. Yeah. Okay. So to my conclusion, I came, I, I actually reviewed now manually uh, why. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me explain first uh, the answer relevancy. I actually dropped them because it, uh, I was using a lot of tokens just to run each of these for the for the very for the ten or the the specific. So for each, it was costly. So I decided to prioritize the metrics that I was using. First of all, I started simple by just using the chunking size to eight hundred. So before moving to Pohia, I actually actually just tried it with uh, with the chunking size of eight hundred, and I ended up with the under relevancy was more than 8.0.8 uh, .8 every time even if i had uh poor results i actually confirmed that the answer relevancy was yeah. because so the I, answer was I, more I, relevant to the question every time sorry. just sorry for stopping you because this is where following the discussion before that just yeah. it's helping to me to understand context relevance you have so low context so that relevance. Means, yeah yes which actually may connect how much the LLM uses the context. Yeah. So uh, which uh, basically it's not using in part. So, that means it is really transforming a lot. Maybe that is OK. Maybe how it's measured matters. That means if it is if there is a lot of transformation, but semantically they are not the same. So I assume that's going to be so uh, um, whether it actually it just basically means the four the the gpt is probably giving you something outside the context it seems um so with context relevancy i i don't think it it yeah, okay i i it doesn't test uh, the llm generation 
so it is the it is the, the how how the context is relevant to the question so it's it's the no, no. so i mean i'm just body. referring no no i'm just referring this now one. maybe yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, the context relevance, it says the definition, does the retrieved information actually contribute to the generator text? So, I mean, unless I am referring, I mean, I'm referring that, which basically measures context relevance is, uh, we initially estimate the value of S by identifying sentences with the retrieved context that are relevant for answering the given question. The final score is basically that S divided by total number of sentences in retrieved context. So that means yeah. how much of the sentence that actually contributed to the text divided by that. Maybe it, it may not mean anything. It in, means in relation you might to the have, actually have uh, the context there, but the size is very large. So is the size very large in terms of like there might be a lot of noise. So what is the token number, the number of tokens here? Uh, I can 800. Uh, 800 is not, uh, it's the chunk size i can't say it's that token i think the, the way the split works it use yeah i think um let's say tokens yeah so but um no it's characters it's in it's 800 characters uh with recursive character splitter so but it it becomes to average when you use recursive um, so the average is 600 to a thousand uh, with recursive uh, the characters splitted um, but not the token so, 300 or something um, uh, tokens yeah 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 something like that it will be so did it bother you I, the only reason I'm asking this is just you know anyone who wants to go to production this is what they care so I, I would care yeah that and i want to understand why this is so small when you have answer relevance i mean i understand now but especially i don't understand is context position is high i okay. would have imagined context position and context relevance to be similar because precision means normally that noise it measures also noise while recall just doesn't care about noise but it's just whether it contains or not while precision is you know how much of it uh, it actually is relevant. You know, in part, it's related. So, because the answer correctness hasn't improved as much from here to cohere, right? Yeah. 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 So Why? that that one is because I I tinkered with the prompt uh, the prompt because if I have the context which has the answer, then uh, it's the it's, a, it's the part of the LLM to to come up with a good answer. So if it doesn't, um, uh, I think it might be getting let's say a lot of context, which uh, which actually becomes noise uh, the way you said and hides some part of the answer, unable to for the LLM to retrieve or understand the answer. But it, the answer is actually in the context. Okay, good. From, I mean, yeah. just. So this, this helps us now continue. I will not interrupt you. So this was just more to understand. So now you can proceed. Okay. So uh, the reason I came here is I dropped uh, I dropped the context relevancy and I stick with the past four. Uh, it, I, I didn't mean not to include them totally. It was just to uh, stick with the, uh, the, my priorities uh, for now until I'm sure that these ones were or improved, then I will come and test now. I will come in and include these ones and confirm now along with the others uh, because I had to improve one. Actually, started correctness, but I realized the context was more relevant. So I, I tried with context recall and and precision, and then I included correctness and faithfulness. So the relevancy was mostly higher uh, every time because, okay, say so this is answer relevant answer was mostly relevant to the question when you are asked okay let me take the first example with with what are the if i can say what are the parties to the argument and what are the defined names so if you don't have the context that means if i give any answer like i don't know if i name anyone to say they are the advice and the common and the company is not cloud or something else it will still be relevant to the question because it's asking parties but if 
to confirm it's true now correctness we have to go up to the context so that's why it was mostly high because it actually answered but wrong facts and uh, so to go back uh to go here uh go here so here here there in go here um, uh, sorry So here in Cohere, I, I I actually generated multiple queries, and then I used Rank Fusion to rank them first. It has a formula, and then the Rank Fusion will then Rank Fusion will rank the results. But also, I would also re-rank them with Cohere. So I will take those three approaches, and it improved. But here i started for, uh, on the correctness i started focusing on on prompt engineering and making sure because when you look at how legal contracts are designed uh so i could take an example of the, Rob the robinson you, you when you cite you have to cite some uh, uh, an example is you have to cite uh, according to section something under section something uh so you just can't say the answer is billable uh hours but you have to uh mostly in legal i realize you have to cite the section uh you have to cite the section where you have the answer so here the llm was inciting the uh the it was inciting it wasn't giving a reference so just saying the answer the parties are these uh you know it was giving the answer directly so citing will have been more important and that's why uh i had to uh, i had to go and look at that and and start focusing on semantic semantic chunking and also uh uh what do you say uh, pre pre uh fine tuning fine tuning a model on legal contracts so after i got here i think i I didn't have any more improvements. So, but if we look at one of these, uh, the reason why uh, the reason why most of most of the answer correctness, uh, most of the context precision was failing terribly, it was because of the ranking and the context retrieval. So, when I was when I was using rank fusion the first time, um, th these are like separated by the I tested only with one from here. I just tried to understand why was it low. So I looked at this and I realized even from the first five documents, uh, with a question like this, I didn't have the context, the, the part that was supposed to be having the answer. It was actually falling up to number 10, 20, uh, 10, 15 down there. So I had to get more documents and then re-rank them. Uh, using Cohere and rank, and rank Fusion, and then Cohere again, because Rank Fusion itself wouldn't didn't have Rank Fusion does not use semantic does not use semantic uh, ranking. So Cohere will use the semantic ranking, and then based on the question, it will try to bring up the one that the the context that is more relevant to the top. That's why it was important. But again, this brought me to another. Uh, endeavor to make sure that uh, semantic semantic works with law uh, with legal contracts because I I saw that there was much difference. So the question and even the part that had the context wasn't aligning even with cosine similarity. If when I put placed zero point five, uh, it was falling under zero point five in semantic. Uh, in cosine similarity, so the semantic meaning between the question and the actual answer, the actual part that has the answer was was low. So there was a reason to fine tune it. So, but uh, I I didn't I didn't actually have the results for that, but I tried several things. So were you trying uh, to compare? Sorry, were you trying to compare the answer 
and the question uh, uh, using cosine yeah. similarity? Uh, with cosine similarity. No, that, no. that's that's not uh, okay. So what is it? What, what are you um, trying? Because I, I'm, I'm misunderstanding. Yeah. Uh, here, the, the actual part, I don't know if this is, I'm not sure if the documents were given or... Uh, so, okay, so you have the you have a vector for semantic means, just let's say dense, right? So you have the vector for the equation, and then you have yeah. a vector for each of the the context, which means the chunks. Yeah. And are you trying, are you trying to see how much is the cosine similar, you know, the cosine mm -hmm. distance? Uh, yeah, I, I saw the cosine dist and I filtered out. Uh, when you retrieve documents, you can place a threshold. Yes, exactly. Similar. So you, you get the distance. So what yeah. what are you trying to do? I'm just trying to understand. So in your... here, here I was trying to see where. So uh, if, uh, when we look at this, this this part is where I have the this is like the actual part that has the answer to the question. And it yeah. wasn't even appearing in the first five results, and even the ten. So, okay, it was it wasn't it it was and far apart in meaning. I understand. And what does that mean? What what are you then trying to solve that issue? What are you trying to do? Um, yeah. So for me, uh, so what I went through is try to try to get. Uh, I I thought that context in law. Uh, the meaning, the meaning in uh, the semantic meaning in in legal contracts and law, is uh, sort of different because the terminologies uh, and the way they are written, they are like they are like more similar with terminologies, but the meaning will be different with normal language. That's why I thought that these parts, the that thinking that it was more close to this, and the actual answer was. Uh, somewhere else, I don't, I saw that the semantic meaning in law was. But I, I, you know, this is excellent, right? You know what I appreciate normally, and what I, it is a comment for others. Just seeing only numbers is not, you know, basically what I unless you are expert, that is not good. And even when you are expert, it's not good. And I think the way that you drill down to understand. Uh, to look into something and then see it is very good so very very good but yeah. it's also one of the comment i give you is you are also maybe approaching it slightly like you are making early conclusion so now you have started exploring then you have to be scientific in that sense okay you should not assume you know so then you should basically say like okay i would have been very convinced that if you then say what is the cosine distance for with this one the equation and the actual ground truth you know is it is it just because they are so second digits or you know difference or is it just the first digits difference right and yeah. and that would give you an, an idea whether it is it is actually and then the other part is whether it is like these ones what makes them actual because you're you are making an assumption that the keywords are influencing but you know how did you establish that fact you know like that that is actually driving so you're, you're it's an hypothesis i understand as a simple hypothesis i understand but a good hypothesis usually then also learns like okay you know it, because every hypothesis if you keep if you test them they cost so having a good hypothesis that means you know i think the question i asked you last time as a brain teaser is to use every information available to generate your next hypothesis so in that sense you know what led you are there no better hypothesis that could make sense for me for example your hypothesis i don't know how you get them but they don't get they don't seem to connect uh, it okay. seems uh, yeah maybe just argue but it didn't seem to connect to me let, let me say something uh, where did uh, you get? yeah uh no uh this one is because uh so when you uh, just from retrieval you have the top uh the top list um so i actually cut off by sem semantic meaning i cut off the the document so i so i came with this hypothesis because it doesn't appear in the top results so and i it's confirmed insane. by cutting the threshold but also to confirm this i wanted i went to sentence transformers model i try i i went with all, all uh 
it's called Olem Olempinet, Olempinet by Microsoft. Yeah. So I, I wanted to. Let, 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 let's I wanted not go. It's very simple here. You just see this thing, and there is a difference. The ground truth is not here, or the context that should be here is not here. And you're trying to make a hypothesis why that is the case. So you don't need to do many much. You know, this is a very simple problem. Now, one part is, of course, how the vectors distances are different. Second part is, I mean, if I mean, I would like you to argue, yeah, like the the keywords here are not in the context that are retrieved. So that's why I am thinking that the legal context, maybe legal legal semantic, maybe is not similar. If you say that, I would argue that is okay. That's an educated guess. See, like these things are very simple. You, you know, you don't have to think much. Like you can just you have to like first order thinking, which is like, okay, you are saying maybe semantic difference, semantics in legal maybe is slightly different from the normal. But that is a very big claim. To do that, at least you have to have you have to compare. Like, are the extracted, you know, what is the reason why they are on top? You know, uh, you could just do that. Is it because there are keywords that are there, but semantically different because the agreement there and agreement there are different? If you show that, I would say, great. Then you have a point for your um, hypothesis. Do you, do, you, do you see what I mean? Yeah, I understand. I understand. Perhaps I want to. So, I didn't yeah, want to conclude too soon, so I actually said it might be different. So that's why I wanted to compare the the question with the ground truth using sentence transformers model. Yes, no, that is good, and also not only that, I can tell you what did you use. Like, did you use ADA or did you use uh, what what vectorization did you use? I used uh, I used OLMPNet to start with, uh, and then so you mean to vectorize uh, the text. Yeah, to vectorize the text. A lot of the issue is there. I can tell yeah. you, it has nothing got to do with the thing. Yeah, if you had used OpenAI, like if you had even used the you know the previous state of the art vectorization, you would get this. So retrieval is so sensitive to the the actual um, the actual vectorization module use. So you could just simply get rid of all of this if you had used a good you know, one of the good vectorizer. I don't know Lampino, but if you just use now the same tool, nothing, no other thing, if you just replace it with generate OpenAI small, you know, you would basically get all of these eliminates. Um, so so yeah, uh, on uh, on Autogen Rag, I actually tried with OlympiNet uh, instead of now OpenAI to confirm if that was the case. Uh, so I ended up having uh, the same the same results. That did you use did you use OpenAI and you get the same results? Yeah, open, the first the first one was OpenAI embeddings. Uh, and uh, you you, you yeah, get the but, same the same. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so just to say here 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 I used uh, I used three models. I tried with OpenAI embeddings and then went to Cohere embeddings because it's also a model. I had the same results, and then I went to now I went to the sentence transformers model uh, from Hugging Face, and I also had the same results. And I so, just to so confirm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then in that case, in that case, I would feel because I think why is a very maybe just you have to make sure it's actually are you correct? The context is not on the top, you know what what yeah. is it like what is you know uh it, it seems to me is that then yeah, your chunking methodology in a sense like it's splitting some things so for example if you go back to where you were showing us the question and answers like the context okay the um, question and context you're showing us yeah not this one the questions question and, and context Okay, okay. Question and context. Yeah, this okay. one. So what I am thinking is that it seems maybe like if you have now, you know, many of the concepts in the question are already in the context, then it is not the issue of it's not the issue of the LLM, right? Or the vectorizer. That means semantically, this is just normally a sentence, you know, is just the semantic average of each of its focus. So 
it's basically maybe that in principle they are there so you have to just compare and maybe just tell us what makes the actual what you are the, the context the let's say the ground truth context so the context you think it should be there what makes it very far is that because the question is you know what is it like why doesn't why doesn't it come here is that because the question that is asked is so complex you know maybe in a complex in a sense like it's semantically complex so I'm or, not sure. what is the case yeah, so I, I wanted to confirm that so before I did a uh, multiple query expansion and uh, for no, each no, no, answer forget 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 no, no I think you guys are just going jumping onto algorithms immediately when you are ex okay. when you are exploring something like this don't do too complex stuff because when you don't understand something and you, you do something you don't understand it doesn't answer it I would really advise when you are trying to solve something like this answer it with a very very basic which means as much as possible by hand you know not by another algorithm so that means i would really just go and look at the study and put side by side and check it i will not apply another algorithm that actually then i have to understand you know what i mean is like you're trying to solve one basic question so if you ask me now query expansion and others it's you're not answering the question you are going away from the question the question is very simple why are they ranked for why are they their cosine similarity is higher compared to the cosine similarity of what you are looking for you know what you know just take them and just understand them maybe if you don't understand them maybe just remove some words from the question you know until you get until you understand that's do some sensitivity test yeah that's what i mean is uh the reason i say that is just to change the question into maybe uh like maybe the question had uh it was ambiguous or something so just to re refresh refresh the question just to see and, and are you that. sure also that these contexts don't have the answer yeah like the first I'm, context for example doesn't yeah. it have the answer for that so who are the parties to the agreement and what are yeah. their defined names so let's just take highlight if you can where is one context the okay so the, the context is split by uh, by this dash so this is the first context uh but it's it ends so there's no dropping but essentially they were they didn't have the only one that had the I mean, I, I, I believe, you know, it, it feels to me so hard that it actually returns this. I mean, I, I can't believe it. Like, for example, the first context is actually the Victor similarity to the first. I feel there is some error. There isn't even, unless there are contexts, there are texts that I, you are now showing us that's cut. I think semantically they are very different. So in their Victor, you know, are you sure like make sure because they they don't seem there isn't even similarity semantically yeah i'm sure, I'm they, sure. i confirmed with the uh, with other embedding models uh, no, no, like I, I confirmed it by no no i mean the, i think the term of the agreement shall... so can you show us the ground what, what's supposed to be the context uh the answer yeah and the, i mean the, the context, oh, the context, the context that has the answer okay yeah. uh this is the context this is the let me zoom it in this is the one that is the con the context that's supposed to have the answer to the parties agreement so it was so uh, i mean i mean a simple as simple yeah. yeah can you can you like i mean I, I would be someone else can also confirm but it it might be either a chunking issue um, in such a way that agreement is there, therefore agreement and and things are there. So maybe just agreement is not falling in the actual context you are looking for. So that may be influencing, but by just a small, maybe that's the case. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but I would feel it has a lot more got to do with the answer is split in a completely different context and so it, it is this is where chunking is the issue 
you know, yes. can you expand slightly the, the chunking and can this be solved? Yeah, so I expanded the chunking up to a thousand. That means and still, that, yeah, and still, yeah, and still they were the same, the same. It was still falling below five, uh, the top five, despite okay. having that, yeah. So I, I want so the answer, let, let's, the answer. let's stop it here, like okay. just so that because we are taking time, but I want this one to discuss. So can you please just uh, post this question and everyone based on your just um, the first top five uh, context you get and the algorithm you, you know, you are applying or using, just please post it in Slack. Let's see, because it, it is an interesting one. So and I believe you and it's just it is interesting what actually is driving you know is that just because of the the, the the question type maybe it's the complexity of the the question that you know names are somewhere agreement is somewhere else you know like so maybe is that just that it is not getting they are so far apart because one is in one page in the first page and the other one is let's say in the tens or twenties um, page and so there's I mean, no way that that you are connecting um, these two. And that's maybe the reason. Uh, yeah, can I like, like we have the document. I don't. I'm not. I don't know if I'm supposed to share, but uh, no, no, just not the yeah. document. I'm saying just no. the the, yeah. the the same. The reason I'm saying is it's, it's yeah. because I I I split. I went to split up to here. That means it will be up to more than a thousand uh, characters, and then it will take like. Yeah. So Only what I'm are, saying is that the first one it? contains everything, right? So the yeah, advisory. It, yeah. So and it and it's not returning the first one, me. even if you are asking it, what are the parties to the agreement? Uh, and what are their, you know, I mean, I would imagine the first one should be returned a lot more. But let's test it. I mean, let's just, let's put it as a challenge for everyone to share. Okay, so proceed maybe. And maybe uh, M. Tinan, you were wanted to say something? Yeah, I was, I, I was just wanted to talk about the embedding, but he already answered that, so. Okay. Good, go for it, uh, proceed. I mean, let's just conclude as fast as we can. It's yeah, already... I, I don't, yeah, I don't actually have much, just the autogen drug I tried and uh, to integrate the front end, I had issues with that. This was uh, just to get the results. You shared the chart, and um, yeah. and uh, I the the embedding there it ended up using a lot of a uh, lot of tokens. But actually, that way was the most optimal to have the answers uh, because the the issue was that one. It wasn't being ranked. The result the the context wasn't being ranked, so I had to get a larger context. Uh, yeah. And uh, the future improvements is to chunk to handle legal contracts with uh, because uh, when I chunk with uh, the document, uh, let me show you. Uh, you see this 1.3, these are sections, and uh, section 1.1 .1 is not being taken, is, is being split, it's, it's not being considered. They consider the check, so that one was my other consideration to improve to include the sections in in the chunking and then uh maybe expand the knowledge base with so, uh, large a range of legal domains this is the fine tuning case if i'm going to use a, a model i fine tune it uh, maybe legal contracts and then try on that with the embeddings and the retrievals i think that will have maybe be an improvement and also using ensemble retriever to combine more retrievers. Uh, thank you. Great. I mean, I think, you know, the most important part, and I like both uh, Mr's and um, Hilary's presentation, if you detail and if you zoom in in something is where you learn a lot more than just sometimes, of course, you have to cover a lot. For example, I would have imagined um, in the assay in the when you use autogen you could have done most of it if you incorporated as a tool the aspect of ragas you would be able to do query expansion and everything just you know the there are like the 
agents can do that for you. Like that means by choosing, by optimizing, it might choose the right, for example, the right metric. So for the right question, of course, we know that the cost will be higher, but at least it will be able to choose, for example, you know, a number of algorithms, one of the algorithms that is suitable for that question, and maybe just also the context size from which context it should select, you know, whether if you are, if you are using especially parent versus, uh, you know, parent-child type, you, it would could it could determine you know whether to get a uh, more larger context or smaller context and it will basically whatever the things that you are deciding it could have been able to do that right and um so those were my goal if you you know to explore if you in um, with agents because in a way you would be able to handle a lot more decision making in autogen or in agents than actually just you doing it but yeah it was an exploration that's great and this this week you'll be able to do actually a lot more agents and um, be prepared but i think it's over time what i will want to do is that i'm gonna maybe um i don't know what is the right thing maybe just let's stop it here and close it and after before so what is the program maybe just um, maybe the afternoon session before it starts i can go through the challenge document that's afternoon is what time is it uh, is that just 1 p.m right the 1 p.m or 2 p.m the tutorial normally Antinan or natanel or anyone or uh, for today we have just scheduled from the technical side we have just scheduled the introduction to the challenge okay so then can we do it can we move the the time to the afternoon because okay. like the 12 was not making okay two two so yeah what time is normally the the afternoon session the tutorial supposed to be is that one two p.m etc now i think it's one p.m one p.m okay so it's okay so yeah let's make it then just let's shift it so that people can kind of break Okay, we can move it to 2 p.m. Not 2 p.m., 1 p.m. UTC, which means, I don't know what that means. In, it's 4 uh, p.m. Uh, 4 p.m. Ethiopia. Yeah, exactly. Okay, 4 yeah. p.m. Okay. East African time, yeah. Okay, okay. yeah, 4 p.m. East African time, 1 p.m. UTC. Let's okay. Okay. Thanks, guys.